The following podcast is a next level production. Hey, let me borrow your car. I don't want to talk to you. Fine, just let me borrow your car. Why should I loan you my car? I want to rent a movie. You want to rent a movie? I want to rent a movie. What's that for? You work in a video store. I work in a shitty video store. I want to go to a good video store so I can get a good movie. And a pack of cigarettes. Cute cat. What's his name? Annoying customer. Fucking dickhead. Can you imagine being halfway decent to the customer sometimes? Let me boil your car. May I be blunt with you? If you must. We are employees of the Quick Stop Convenience and RST Video, respectively. As such, we have certain obligations, though they may seem cool and unusual, does mean manning the store until closing. I see, so playing hockey and attending wakes, these practices are standard operating procedures. There's a difference. Those are obligations. Obligations that couldn't been met at any other date. Now, renting videos, that's just gratuitous, not to mention illogical, being that you work at a video store. Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. I'm Ben Elmore. I'm Daniel Elmore. And I'm Carrie Sanders. Awesome. And this episode, we're going to be talking about our encounters at the 25th anniversary of Silent Bob. Oh, well, what is it? Jay and Silent Bob's secret stash in New- <laughs> Red Bank, New Jersey, that I actually got to attend. And these nice people were actually there and got to encounter that just the same as I did. Had a great time. We got to do a photo op with everybody that was in Clerks, as well as the new Clerks film, accordingly, and got to attend the Q&A session afterwards. So this is basically going to be a brief overview of what we encountered, because we had a great time meeting Kevin and everybody from the Clerks crew. And we're just here just to have a good time and talk about our experience that weekend. So with that, I'll go last, but you guys are (laughs) going to have to go first. So uh, I'll start with Ben and Daniel and then everybody else. And then uh, I'll go last. So, uh, Ben, what was your, uh, you know, favorite moment for the weekend? Uh, My favorite moment is uh, a hug from Kevin Smith. (laughs) I don't think it gets any better than that. You know, I'm a 42 year old straight married man, but, uh, you know, I fully am on board with the hetero life mate thing. He's, uh, been an inspiration of mine for a long time. And, you know, with COVID and everything, that was not something I was expecting whatsoever. And it was amazing. And you can ask my wife, I'm, I'm not a big hugger. So yeah, it was, uh, that, that was my favorite thing. Just, uh, I think that captures how personal, this event was versus uh, like a cattle feeding at a con where you, you know, stand here, <laughs> smile, get out, you know, yeah. that was pretty much my favorite part of the whole thing was just how personal it was. Awesome. I think, uh, I think one of my favorite parts was just being there uh, at the, at the stash in Red Bank mm-hmm. and then uh, the whole experience really just and then meeting Kevin Smith like that's obviously a dream come true that was my first time meeting Kevin wow uh and it was really incredible awesome but being there in Red Bank was was probably my just like a dream come true I had a great time um it's hard to pick one favorite thing this is the first time I've ever done anything remotely close to this um but Jen Kevin's wife uh when we were meeting she like pulled me aside and she was like I love tall women because you know she's tall um and I'm six foot two and yeah. she was like, I love tall women. And I just like looked, I just stared at her and I was like, and I love you. <laughs> and it was, <laughs> and I was like, thanks so much. You know, she was like so sweet. So like getting to meet them and just again, like Ben and Daniel both said the personal experience that it was versus, you know, at like a con or, you know, anywhere else. And they were like in their house and they were so comfortable and it was cool to see them in one of their actual natural elements. That it is. And honestly, uh, it, you left because I live, well, I lived in Staten Island for the first 28 years of my life. I never went to the original stash. I personally never got a chance to get out there. The only time I was able to actually get out to the 35 
Broad Street address was, I'm going to say about five or six years ago. And you guys came from long distances. I live literally two hours away now. I live in upstate New York in that area. So you guys traveled further than I did. We didn't even come from the mainland of the United States. We <laughs> we, we hopped over from the islands from the Florida Keys, flew wow. up out of Fort Lauderdale into Newark. And uh, us country folk, originally, we were all born and raised in Louisiana. So none of us have, I mean, I can speak for myself especially, but we we had never ridden a train, much less one in New York. So so that was that was all like we were, you know, kind of country come to town. <laughs> like, like it was a fun experience. Like I know you're like, oh yeah, I got to ride the train. Yes, you know. And for us, we're like, yes, we're riding the train. <laughs> I would be that way just the same myself if I were to come down to Florida from like taking an Amtrak all the way down, uh, as well as even going up to the Great White North. That hopefully that Mr. Smith himself will actually complete that Great Northern movie series that we all want with uh, Moose Jaws. But yeah, I uh, yeah I I understand where you're coming from. Trust me. To me, honestly, it was only a two hour ride from where I was to get down there. Now, mind you, with the rain and driving down there was crazy. Oh, that was another <laughs> thing. We left sunny, ninety degree spring, you know, island weather, and we get up there, and I don't own a jacket, not a single one to my name. We get Ooh. up there, and I'm like, um, I hate it. <laughs> And so like, we yes. went and that, I mean, it just gave me an excuse to buy one of the jackets at the secret stash, but um, yeah, it, it was cold for sure. It was like 40. It was like sleeting at one point. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, ask yeah. my head cold how the weather was. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't exactly right. Like the weakest sleep. We knew it. <laughs> we knew somebody does, was it, coming back sick. It, uh, Daniel called it like on the first day, but it, it doesn't take long of living where winter is like 65 degrees to uh, not slowest, be acclimated. Yeah. So, but... <laughs> It was good. Uh, what was your favorite part of this whole experience? Honestly, my favorite whole experience was literally just getting to the stash. I've been there before. Uh, it's not my first rodeo going down there. And as far as well for a live event that goes on, my first live event I did about four years ago. And Ming had posted it on Twitter saying, hey, just come down, whatever. I showed up at like 730 they didn't have any tickets at the time, and <laughs> Mike was kind of overwhelmed with the situation because you have locals that are big, huge Kevin Smith fans, and I'm coming from all the way up north or northwest at this point in New York, and I came down, and it was free comic book day, actually, and uh, at that time, just around the same time. And uh, Ke uh, Mike walks out and goes, um, yeah, uh, we're cutting it off now. And I was it was three people ahead of me. So I missed out. And I've been trying to get to like certain events like that at the stash. And I think since then, since Mike was taking over events situations, it worked out well. And in a sense that I got to see and meet Kevin in December during that holiday thing that was going on. And I really had a good time at that point. And I got to meet and talk to Kevin mentioned how much he influenced me to getting into podcasting because I don't know if, you know, cause you guys have your own podcast as well. But with me, I, I was listening to like Chris Hardwick, uh, Kevin Smith, a lot of my friends that have already done that I've become patrons to. And I, that's how I started getting into it. Originally, I wanted to start a podcast in 2012, but it took like the fortitude of hearing Kevin saying all the time, get a friend, get together, put a podcast together. And, you know, I, I finally did one in 2017. So we're a little over five years at this point and uh, with Panels to Pixels podcast, and I, I'm just enjoying it. And the fact that he said to me, he asked me where I was at that time. I think at that time I was at actually episode 167 and he goes, well, I'm 200. I'm like, wait, what? And he is that such a consummate gentleman. He's say, unapologetically I, supportive of everybody yes. that is supportive of him. And that is admirable. And, you know, in my opinion. 
Yeah. So right now, this would be episode 196. Oh, we're so, so close. <laughs> so close. And I spoke to him this past weekend, and he actually said that he'd be on episode 200. So my co-host Steve Brown and I will most likely will be doing that particular episode. Congratulations. With him. Hey, uh, I, I, I am happy for anybody that succeeds. And Daniel and I had a very similar conversation. We recently bought a business and, you know, I, I told him, I said, the more that I get into this fan base and the more that I get exposed to all of this, because I am new to everything, like had never seen Star Wars before I met this man. And I now have what? Star Wars sleeves. <laughs> Um, but you wow. know, yeah, <laughs> you know, so like he's, he's exposed me to so much, but Kevin Smith and his whole universe has been one of the, I mean, it's been one of the biggest aspects of our whole entire relationship that it revolves around. And it's just, I feel like, you know, he has given me the confidence that he's like, you know what, we're a couple weird kids with some comic books where we can sell it and make movies and look what we did. And like, you can do it too. If you just invest in yourself. And exactly. And it's really putting yourself out there. And as we know from Kevin and who he is, he's pretty much a self-promoter. And he's been doing that since day one from his own movie. And he put himself in debt back then, but now he's made himself a, a media icon in, in certain ways, in my opinion. Oh, ab absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And meeting him is great. It was interesting. We kind of had the same experience as you. We listened to Kevin Smith. We listened to Dinosaur Dracula. I don't know if that's a podcast you've listened to before, but I've uh, heard of it. Yeah. And we got, so good. and then I became friends with Ming after working a convention with him uh, because awesome. Brian Johnson ran off his uh, their table guy. So Ming put a call out on Twitter, and you know that was in 2014, and you know. After wow. he opened the studio and everything, Daniel and I were like, screw it. Let's just give it a shot. So I bought the hosting and did a couple things, got a little bit of equipment. And, uh, you know, you're doing way better than we are on episodes. Uh, the one we recorded this weekend was number 11 for us. We're not uh, super <laughs> consistent, but. We try, honestly, we're uh, an episodic kind of podcast. Uh, I don't, you guys probably have not even looked into what I do. Or, I actually or have Steve. I listened to a couple. To oh, a okay. Yeah. I didn't want to come in here blind. <laughs> All right, cool. But uh, Steve has been hosting for a while while I was away. I had to move. I had to put my, my mother had to go into a retirement home. I had to get up my own place and take care of a few things. So Steve took house and hold and stepped up very much like on episode 100 where uh, Ming and Mike, actually Mike actually pointed out to Steve himself saying, Mark will give you the keys to the kingdom one day. And I did. So, and Steve did a great job and he, he still is doing a great job. He's pulling his own. He's putting in all the social media stuff. We do work regular jobs. We, this is a labor of love for us because we just Absolutely. love what we're doing. I, I love that you have snow piercer episodes because I'm in the middle of that ridiculousness right now. And uh, I, I hate awesome. to say how much I'm enjoying it. Yeah, well, like we always look for people to come on as well. It's not just Daphne and, and Steve that does that. So if you have an interest on being on, you're more than welcome to. A, a lot of our listeners are welcome to be on. They just don't really give in a lot of feedback too much. But when they do, they give really good points of views. And we have a good time with doing it. And I had to stay away from it, too. It's funny. You talk about Snowpiercer. I'm like a season behind, so I'm going to binge watch the hell out of Snowpiercer and then I have to go back and listen to what Steve did because honestly I did all the editing but did I actually listen to them speak <laughs> not really <laughs> but uh, I have to listen to my own podcast to actually catch up but there's not many out there that do Snowpiercer which I'm, I'm glad that you're really getting into and it's glad I'm really glad to hear that other people are into it as well thank you for that and uh, like you said, like I said, you guys came far and wide from different places to get here to for the weekend. You had a great time. Yes, it was rainy. <laughs> I encountered the rain. You guys encountered the rain. Uh, I came all gussied up with my Panels to Pixels podcast t-shirt. Uh, I don't know if you remembered seeing me there, but I was there. And I think I had a great time just engaging with some of the actors. I didn't get as many selfies as you guys did because you guys... From what I saw on social media, you were out there getting all those selfies. And <laughs> Jeff Anderson, <laughs> uh, we had stepped aside because 
Ben wanted to get an autograph, which I'll let him tell the funny story about him not even needing the autograph. But um, oh, we had really? stepped aside to get out of the autograph line. Uh, people were, you know, ready to meet Kevin. And at that point, you know, they're all yelling, no selfies, you know, whatever. And so we're yeah. looking like, whatever. Jeff Anderson walks over and he just starts talking to Daniel and I. And like, I, I mean, like, it's a casual conversation and he engages for at least about 15 or 20 minutes. And finally, some guy was like, hey, man, can I please have your autograph? And he's like, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, you forgot. Jeff's new to this. They're, yeah. they're talking about no selfies, no selfies. And Kevin's like, and let's do this selfie. And we're doing a selfie. So I look at Jeff and I was like, uh, <laughs> can we take a selfie? And he was like, you know what? Why not? And I'll, you know, so it was great. It, you know, they always say Kevin yeah. never follows the rules of those. <laughs> uh, Kevin, is, he walks his own path and it's his place. Honestly, it literally is his place. Mike is the, uh, I, I don't know what happened with Walt or anything that happened within the stash during that time. I'm very clueless to it, but Mike's been doing a great job as far as covering and what's going on within the stash. And I really appreciate what he's doing. Oh, I actually absolutely. have to, yeah, I have to actually bring him some comics down because I have to unload after moving. <laughs> and, uh, it, the one thing that Mike said, please don't give me your garbage. <laughs> but uh i i know mike a, a little bit because he was on episode 100 for panels to pixels podcast we actually have it on youtube and awesome. uh we him and ming showed up and we had a great time and we had some great stories about comic book man which was amazing daniel was invited to that show right when it was canceled mm. so he was scheduled to be oh, on the wow. show uh, and then it was canceled i'll let him talk more about that though yeah, Daniel, tell us tell us your experience. I had gotten word they were doing like a casting call. Okay. And uh, they were looking for unique memorabilia. And I had a statue of a character from the movie Creep Show Ooh. that I had built. And I thought it was really cool. And I thought people might like to see it. So I sent them uh, pictures of it. And mm -hmm. they emailed me back and they loved it. And they wanted me to do a video, like an interview. So I, I did that and I submitted that and they loved that and they called me and I did uh, two or three phone interviews and it got all the way up to like, okay, like we're going to like filming and like this. And they got word that because it there could be a copyright issue, they couldn't have it on the show because I had made it from a copyrighted film. Oh, wow. Uh, so I didn't, get to, I didn't get to be on, but it was uh, uh, the weekend that the stash really kind of made up for it. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. had I had actually scheduled for us to go up there for that filming, and I had made arrangements with O'Howard to meet up with him and spend some time that weekend, and then it just kind of all fell apart right there at the end. But it uh it was sad. But Daniel has a, a super impressive collection of all things nerdy, so which you can find <laughs> on the Two Key Geeks Instagram that focuses more on Ben and Daniel's collection side of the podcast our accumulation of crap over the years. It's, uh, one of my, one of my not friends crap to those that was like, your house makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's good. We, we actually, you were talking about, you know, Walt and Mike and everything. I think Mike's doing a great job with the store. Julia is also doing an incredible job. I, she's an amazing woman. I love her to death. Yeah. Kevin actually got really defensive about Walt. Somebody started something on Twitter and, uh, it was probably the firmest I've ever seen Kevin be with somebody. I, I just, I don't know what the situation is there. Kevin insists that there's no Me bad neither. blood or no problems, but I do feel, uh, I, I think a lot of it, Walt's a, a fairly private person. He doesn't do as many cons and things as he used to do. And, uh, you know, it is what it is at the end yeah. of the day. If he chooses not to be involved at that level, then, you know, that's his choice. He's an adult and he also has other things going on. So. Yeah, but Kevin was uh, apparently it, it gave the impression that he was pretty miffed that people were talking crap on Twitter about Walt and him not being there this weekend. So I uh, that also shows to what they say about Kevin too, because I've been seeing a lot of hate on Twitter about Kevin himself. And honestly, my feeling is if you have nothing good to say, don't say anything. Yeah, just shut up and keep scrolling. That's It's not that hard exactly. to do. Exactly. The, the, the trollers could keep just on trolling on their own and just talk amongst themselves, in my opinion. 
Honestly, Kevin has done a lot for media in general, not just for comics, but in pop culture. And people know who he is. And for him to defend Walt, that's a true friend. And I'm glad that Kevin actually did that. Every time the opportunity arises for him to continuously prove his character, he does nothing but kills it, shoots it. You know, he continuously is the same great person. And, yeah. you know, consistency is, is and especially in that biz, you know, so it's so nice to see. Yeah, it's great to hear that, you know, he actually, you know, is there for his friends, is a consummate gentleman and actually promotes other people as well as not just his own brand. And he appreciates every fan that's out there. And I think all of us have encountered that this weekend. Oh, you absolutely. Know, ben, yeah, Ben, Dan, you were saying it, you know, hugs. And I had a laugh, too, because he didn't know my name at all. The last time he saw me was in December. I had a Captain America shirt. How did he remember me? He called me Captain. <laughs> That's amazing. Love that. Now, mind you, with the last name Kirkman, throughout all my childhood into my adult life, a lot of people would say Captain Kirkman. Actually, that is something I adopted for an old band that I played in in the early 90s called Angawa Simba. And people called me Captain Kirkman because I led the band. I wrote the music. I booked the shows. I uh, dealt with the... Uh, the booking agent itself to get our money and things of that nature. And so captain just rang through. And then when he looked at the card, he goes, cause I gave him my business card for pounds to pixels podcast. He goes, well, the captain makes sense now. <laughs> 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 and I was like, okay, thank you, sir. <laughs> and, uh, we kind of uh, resolved the issues of like him being on for episode 200 because it's been months since then. And I've been trying to get with uh, speaking with Jordan and his publicist and everything else to be on. So he actually uh, gave me some information. So uh, I'm hoping that this will go through. Hopefully it will do. Uh, I told him I, I could easily just move it forward. Because he's very busy with everything opening up now. He's doing more and more appearances. Now, I don't know if you guys were aware of Philadelphia with uh, Fan Expo, which was formerly Wizard World. I've seen the Fan Expo appearances posted. I don't know any details about it. Okay. So, uh, Wizard World is no longer. Fan Expo has taken over. Uh, my friend, Ben Beck, who is owner of the Next Level online radio podcast network which this particular podcast is on actually hosted the the panel for the fan expo for uh that weekend last month which was amazing and got to introduce kevin and jay for their night on saturday i kind of missed everything and i only showed up on sunday so it kind of sucked for me but ben had a great weekend and talked nothing but raves about Kevin and how he was and to the audience. And, and eventually he, you know, Kevin will be on Wilhelm, which is on the next level online radio podcast network as well. So it, it's amazing that Kevin will hand that out to those of us who are fans that led or followed through with his path of podcasting, you know? Absolutely. I thought it was great, and uh, I, 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 if you guys get to see the video, it's amazing, and I just love what Ben had to do. But Kevin is very much the person that you could just hang with and talk to casually, I've noticed over the years, with casual interactions with him. To me, I grew up in Staten Island, which was a stone's throw away, just like Brian Quinn, and I just you know, never knew. And then I, you know, this kind of leads us into uh, Clerks and uh, the View Askew universe that you guys got into. So my feeling is, how did you get into Clerks? How did you get into the View Askew stuff? Who do you want to go first? You. <laughs> Me. <laughs> I have to say, Clerks came out when I was a sophomore in high school. I'm 42. And uh, I okay. have to say that, you know, I watched it at the time. I enjoyed it. I hadn't probably really picked up around 
uh, Mall Rats, Chasing Amy, Dogma, Clerks 2. I, that's when I really got interested and uh, it kind of took off a little more when Kevin started his podcasts, all of his uh, Evening with Kevin Smith's. You know, he's such a consummate sort of storyteller. And uh, I just delved in from there. Zach and Mary, you know, I, I'm a fan of everything, but I definitely have a few favorites for sure. Yeah. Now, for me, it was um, I, I discovered the whole View Askew averse probably in the, in the early 2000s, maybe the late 90s. I'm not really sure. And I was uh, immediately blown away. I think I think probably one of the first films I probably watched was either either the original Clerks or Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Uh, <laughs> and I, I was just I immediately was in love with the series and I gobbled up everything I could at the time. And I've kept up with everything since. I, there's a couple movies I still haven't seen yet. I don't own Tusk, but we're. we're uh, oh, you haven't seen Tusk? Uh, we haven't. Oh wow! I saw that in the theater. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think our theater got it in a, in the Bible Belt of Louisiana. <laughs> yeah, I I work in New York. Uh, no, I live in New York, and I I work in Connecticut. So where I live, I live on the border. So at the time, I uh, I was dating a, a a lady, and the funny thing was is that she thought it was a horror movie. <laughs> she didn't realize it was like a really bad dark car- comedy in some right. respects. And uh, she goes, I better not have any nightmares. <laughs> and then she looked at me. She goes, oh, my God, that was fun. So it, it was one of the few. I didn't get to see Yoga Hosers in the theater. Neither did I get to see Jersey Girl or uh, uh, Red State and Ooh. Zach and Mary. Those are the only ones that I have not seen in the theater. Everything else I have seen in the theater, unfortunately, with Clerks, I didn't see it until it was re-released. But I was able to see it on VHS when it came out afterwards, but everything else I've seen in the theater, nice. which is, it is amazing and fun, but it, it, it's like with yoga hosers. It was like direct a video or something. And I was like, Oh man, that sucked. <laughs> so Daniel and I, when I, I, I moved here, so he moved here in 2017. We knew each other in Louisiana. Okay. And then I, I followed in 2019 and, for the first like year of our relationship, he was like, we have to watch this movie clerks. We have to watch this movie clerks. Cause we have a clerks poster hanging in our kitchen mm-hmm. and it, you know, has, it's, it's a black and white photo and there's, you know, the guy under the sheet and you know, <laughs> there's all this, like, I'm not even, you know, it's supposed to be a lot of inside jokes from the movie and I, whatever I'd ask about it. And he would try to get me to watch it. And I'm like, I'm not watching a black and white movie. Like that's stupid. I'm not doing it. And I <laughs> bucked at him for, I mean, it was probably how long, like a year mm-hmm. at the very least. And finally one day it was like rainy and dreary. And I was like, let's watch it. And so we watched it. And then we, I was like, okay, that was dope. Like that was not at all what I expected. And then I yeah. watched the second one. And for the first time, I think in my entire life, I watched, a sequel to a movie that opened my eyes so, so much to the first movie as well. Like, and then I had to go back and watch the first one again. And then it just all started. And Daniel and I have, I mean, I I think I said it earlier, but like a lot of our relationship revolves around the VSU universe. You know, we, we really, I love it. And I think that he's had a great time to get to like show it to somebody. Awesome. It's been, it's been fun introducing somebody to it. That is that a lot of people who don't know it and they know the kind of pop culture jokes that are there and as well as the commentary of like what's going on within the world with like certain situations, it it does work. And that's how Kevin writes. And that's what appealed to me. Uh, I think Morats was the best because a friend of mine, when I saw it in the theater, we went to go see a movie. And this is my short story about it. We went to go see a movie. The movie was that bad that we walked out. And it was a Cinemaplex in Staten Island. It was the UA Theater. And she goes, let's get the hell out of here. I'm like, all right, well, we just paid for a ticket. And she goes, okay. I said, well, let's find something else. So we snuck into what was Mole Rats. (laughs) (laughs) What a happy accident. Yes. And when it came out, and of course I had to get it on, you know, VHS and DVD over the years, and I have the cool uh, second video, whatever, where you get the uh, third video that's on there where you see them talking and doing their commentary, and I have that signed, and I I thought that, to me, 
I love Morats. A lot of people don't, but I love to me, it. I enjoyed yeah, it's it. Underrated. It is very highly underrated. I wish they would have that sequel coming out <laughs> soon. <laughs> I would. I would definitely spend my hard-earned money to go see it once or seven times for <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, did you get to go to the quick? Have you been to the quick stop before, like the original OG location? No. Not until this weekend. I just stopped by on a chance because with the lines and everything that was going on, it was raining outside. I had to get lunch, and I, I was like, all right, I had to get something to eat. I was there since 11 a.m. My thing was at 12.30, and I was like, whatever. So I literally said, all right, I'm going to go to this pizza shop, and it was around the corner, and they had slices. and Mr. Pizza Slice, fans. we ate there. Yep, I yeah, was there. It was good. It was great. So I, I went there, and then after that, I came back, and the idea of me coming back, and now this falls into uh, free comic book day at the stash, because it happened at the same event <laughs> of, the, of, uh, of the event that we went to, and I don't know if you guys heard it outside. You had people complaining because they wanted to be there. I came here for comics. Uh, I didn't. What is uh. going on here? <laughs> I'm like, all right. Um, Hold on. Is there a Brody here? Because, dude, if you know it's Jay and Silent Bob's secret stash, this is Kevin Smith. He created this. And, wow, you sound like Brody, Bruce. What the hell's going on here? You know? And then I heard it twice, literally. And I was like... You were in the part where things got a little bit behind. Am I correct? Yeah, because Ming, I texted Ming and I said, hey, you know, we're fixing to catch an Uber. We're headed to the stash. He's like, I hope you brought an umbrella because they're way behind over there. I was like, you know, okay, if they are, that's fine. That's no big deal. But uh, our appointment was two o'clock and we actually, I mean, maybe by 2.15 we were in there. But there were people that were standing out there. They're like, we're giving this five more minutes to shop and then we're leaving. I'm like, okay, but you kind of picked a bad day to try to shop. Literally, and it, what sucked was that it was free comic book day, and a lot of comic fans like myself would love to go there and get it. And I thought, and they kind of pushed us along at twelve thirty because by the time we got in, it was about twelve thirty, and then they were trying to move along with the photo ops, which was great because you got more than just one picture, so you had more to choose from. Apparently, from the pictures they gave you, and. I was trying to talk to people, trying to talk. I, I spoke to Jen for a half a moment. Trevor had to borrow my Sharpie. Marilyn had to borrow my Sharpie because she didn't have one. Uh, I spoke to Kevin for a little bit. And then they were trying to move us along. And I bought some merch because I had some friends that were there. Uh, I wound up buying a postcard and having it signed by, if you can't really see it, but uh, Kevin, Brian, uh, Jay, and yeah, that's about it. <laughs> but I, I just bought a postcard and said, hey, can you tag this? And that was about it. I don't know if you guys wound up buying the Chili's gum that was there that Scott yes. had actually yeah, that, signed. Uh, that was, yeah, that's what I mentioned earlier about Ben got in line to get that autograph by him, and then he flipped it over when he got up there, and he was like, oh, <laughs> never mind. It's already signed. It's already <laughs> signed. Yeah, Scott told me, he was like, yeah, I snuck in here last night and signed a couple cases of it. So I bought some. It's in my display case now. It was uh, it was great. Yeah. yeah, we bought we all bought some varied merchandise. Um, I bought a piece of the carpet from the old stash, which was probably the most overpriced thing in the store. But you know, How much was it? It was 50 bucks. It's signed by Kevin and Jay. So, I mean, at the end of the day... okay. It's it's not terrible, but I mean, it's something they were going to throw away anyway. But I just think it's cool because of the comic book men uh, connotation. I actually have that. I bought that months ago, uh, before December, when I stopped in. I had a, um, of all things, uh, a podcast retreat with fellow podcasters at Hershey Park. And uh, I stopped at the stash and Mike just looks at me and goes, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> and and I said I came here to shop, so I got the signed hockey mask by Kevin. I I don't know if you saw those there, if they were still there. Uh, I got the the rug or the uh, the rug from the old stash itself too. And you know the stash has changed, uh, as you could tell. I, I don't know if you've been watching the videos and everything because Tesdy is not back there anymore. 
It's more of like a display area. And then he moved into Funko Pop. So I've been keeping up with everything that they've been doing. And I try to chat with Ming or Mike every once in a while. But it's they still have the same stuff. And I, I was tempted to get the Silent Bob, the card, from when they were in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, the dealer's uh, member this, card, yeah. Yep, yeah, the dealer's member. So there, there's so many things in that shop that Kevin will tag, Jay will tag, Scott tagged. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, at least Jeff Anderson tagged a little bit, too. Uh, a Holleran will tag it every once in a while, too. And that's that's the cool part of actually going to the stash is that no matter what, you're going to get something that's autographed and signed by somebody that's there. And mostly a lot of the time it is going to be Kevin because Kevin spends the time there to do that. I purchased a movies um, lunchbox. OK, I wanted the, the movies lunchbox and I wanted the cartoon Jay and Silent Bob lunchbox. But we flew Greyhound <laughs> um, and <laughs> we know we flew Spirit. And so. Um, we only had our backpacks, so I couldn't fit both of them, but I wanted to. But I bought the movies uh, lunch. Uh, I'll post a picture of it later, but the metal lunch yeah. container. And they were only $20, and it's signed by, like, Kevin and Jay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, the, I, I have other collector lunch boxes, and I paid way more for them, and they're not autographed. You know what I mean? Like Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like Daniel and I are going to MegaCon next week, <sighs> next weekend. Uh, awesome. Carrie, Carrie still has FOMO about it because she's out of town that weekend. But uh, Kevin's autograph is seventy dollars at MegaCon. Like I have a Funko that I'm going to get him to sign, and I, I have no problem paying it to support him. But you know, you yeah. go in there, and that would have been like eleven dollars or something. I mean, it's just crazy. They don't. Uh, they don't. Definitely don't overcharge the fans. No, they don't. No. But going back to the quick stop, we actually went for the first time. I mean, obviously, it was our first time. We had never been to Red Bank or Leonardo or anywhere before. So yeah, we did swing by there and take some pictures. On the way there, we realized Daniel forgot his freaking lanyard to get into the Q&A. So oh, it was an yeah. abbreviated trip so that we could take $100 worth of Ubers back to go get it from the hotel. <laughs> but, oh, ouch. <laughs> But we got the better end of that deal. You know, it was worth every penny after hearing Ben having to stand in line. And we walked in and ended up six rows back to the Q&A. And, like, it was warm and, like, we did not stand in the rain. So, you know what? It was worth the money. It was it was worth the, worth the trip. No, it definitely worked out for them. I waited in line outside until about, I don't know. It was supposed to open at 6.30. It was more like 6.50. And uh, yeah. I froze my Wavos off out there. And uh, they came back to the seats I saved for them. And uh, <laughs> we're in good shape. So it was... Uh, I think I was... Uh, uh, were you in Cinema Room 1? Yes, yes, I was in one. So was I. Nice. <laughs> yeah, we I, were I, on the right side. I wish side. I could hear a recording of Room 2. Because I think Kevin talked more in there. From what I've gathered... In conversation, well, hearing other people say in the fan heard. club, in the fan club, they did announce that they are working on editing like all three pieces together, and it's going to be posted, so you will oh, be able great. to actually. Okay, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you're a part of the fan club, listeners, uh, that Kevin M Smith fan club, you could take part in. Actually, I think you could watch the videos and listen to them as well as on a podcast. So uh, that Kevin Smith fan club. So check that out. I'll provide the links in the uh, the notes, but I'm a part of that. I have my shirt that I just got today. I don't know. You guys probably got your shirt sooner than I did, probably. I actually just joined because I heard about it when he first started it, and then I forgot, and then I joined, and I wanted to join the tier that actually gets the dinner party at his house. <laughs> I have no oh, problem wow. paying for yeah. that. They just How posted much is that? <laughs> it's $2,000 for the year. But oh, wow. it includes a lot. And one of the things it includes is a dinner party at Kevin's house in the Hollywood Hills with there's only eight slots available. And they posted that tier, I think, on Friday or Saturday. And I'm on a waiting list and I just signed up yesterday. So, oh, my uh, God, I will gladly pay that much money. To, first of all, you're not getting just that. You're getting uh, screen used prop, screen used clothing. 
uh, all kinds of perks, all the shirts. I'm in the shirt tier, probably the same one you're in the the uh, fun ploy tier. Hoser, so, oh, you're in yoga hosers. Okay, yeah. So I would gladly pay that, but I guess now they're gonna do kind of like a lottery system if you know somebody drops out for those who wow. didn't get in on that because it was limited to eight people. So that's wild. Yeah, uh, that would be interesting. I haven't been to California in years. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not sure if I'm ready to eat vegan just yet. <laughs> yeah, and it says Kevin's going to cook, so I, I don't know. I mean, you could always eat before you went over there and still have a great evening, I'm sure. So, Well, I, well, I would definitely eat something that Kevin had cooked. Yeah. I'm not going <laughs> to say I'm going to refuse. I will. <laughs> but uh, I'm not vegan, so I, I like my meat. <laughs> yeah, I think I would leave there and go to get a steak somewhere. But, you know, I could have the vegetables yeah. beforehand. That'd be okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was the quick stop was great, and oh, I didn't yeah. know that it was a functioning store. Still, <laughs> it is still a functioning store, like, and oh it's God, very much open. the same as it was. <laughs> I was more, I was more blown away with how developed it was around it compared to how we see it in the movies. Oh yeah, because right across the street there are condominiums. Yeah. So when I was standing there, I was like, "This isn't this isn't the right place." <laughs> I, I, I took a picture of it with my car to the far right in front of Smod Castle. Took a long distance side shot, and I sent it to one of my coworkers that I work with, and he's a huge Kevin Smith fan as well. And he goes, "Dude, your car is there." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, my beat up old jalopy element Honda element," and he was just like, "Holy crap!" And he goes, "What was it like?" I said, "The." The quick stop is small. It's just as it was. It, there wasn't really that many big, huge changes. And to the right of it, RST is pretty much like a stockroom area for Smod Castle. And then you have Smod Castle, which is pretty much the rest of RST. And I would love to be in there. I would love to go to a live show just to, to see what it's like and to see what Ernie has done because Ernie has done all the work in the new uh, 65 Broad Street in Red Bank for the Secret Stash. And they mentioned how had... talented he was uh, at oh, the Q&A. Yeah. yeah, and I actually said it to him. I said, Ernie, is everything up to code? Because I do home theater installations for a big box store, so it's all premium work. So I said to him, I said, you have plenum-based uh, networking cable and speaker wire. He looked at me and goes, you're in a business? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he goes, dude, it's all done. He goes, I didn't really do all the electrical based stuff, but I did all the other stuff as far as fabricating and setting up the walls and, you know, getting everything else done and, you know, finalizing whatever Kevin needed. I did. I was like, wow, that is dedication to a friend. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And you got to love Ernie because Ernie is just who he is. And we got to know that during the Q&A. For sure. Yeah, and I just just to love him, and we got to find out about Johnny too, who is uh, Kevin's cousin. Yes, but, yes, the so almost I, villain, I, the almost villain, and uh, Mister Finger Cuffs himself. Yes, and, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. So I I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, so what it, what your thoughts are about the Q and A? What did you what was your take from it that you loved about it too? Because I learned a lot. <laughs> from those Q and A's, yeah, you know, all the cons I've been to, a dozens in my life. Mm -hmm. I've, I've never once gone to a panel or a Q and A or anything. So this was my first time doing any kind of celebrity Q and A. Awesome. Uh, and one of my favorite parts about going to it was just hearing the, the camaraderie between all the yeah. cast. That was that was everything I wanted it to be. I wanted it like like they're all just like I love how everybody's just friends. Natural. And it's all natural. That's just it's great. Yeah, I loved how they were calling fans by names, like "Oh God, here's so and so," and you know, like they they're like they they remember, and that makes it that much more, you know, that much more special that they yeah. like they remember their names and they make it that much more personal. Yeah, especially when Brian points out, "Oh, here's my stalker." Yeah, and, and I was like. Oh. <laughs> the next autograph's going to be on the restraining order. That was great. <laughs> yeah. But he had good questions. Uh, one question in particular that kind of hit the heart for me was about Lisa Spoonhour. Mm. And Lisa passed away and obviously not able to make the whole appearance and everything because 
it was very heartfelt for me for the fact that Jeff was, I think they were married at one point, oh, if wow. I'm correct. I know they were engaged, and they talk about it on the documentary. I think they were married for less than a year. But Jeff kind of refused to answer the question because probably because this is, I, I've seen Jeff at maybe four or five other conventions before. And nobody's ever spoken about that. But since it's in Red Bank and it's about clerks, somebody had to ask that question. And I have to give him props for refusing and declining because that's something that's personal. And it's a lot of respect to, to Jeff for, you know, not answering that question because that's personal. But Brian gave a nice, lovely thoughts about Lisa and how she portrayed within the movie as well as Marilyn, and who else was there other than Jeff? Oh, uh, Scott was there, too. And they all had ni nice things to say about her, which was amazing. Absolutely. That's I, I never got to meet her at any cons or anything. Um, I have a shelf in one of my display cases. I have all of my comic book men signed Funkos from that limited run they did. I've mm -hmm. got random little pieces, my past from this weekend. And one of the things I bought, uh, because you know you can't see her anymore. Obviously, is one of the uh, the yeah. clerk's trading cards. It's an RST video store card that's signed by her. So it's in my Aww. case with the rest of my stuff. That's good. That's nice. Uh, uh, you have a little piece of Lisa. Yeah, I that's, really enjoyed. That's uh, really cool. I enjoyed the whole Q and A. I do go to panels pretty regularly. I've been to. Quite a few of Kevin's shows, live podcast recordings, things he's done. He he pops up here in Florida quite a bit since his mom lives here now. And uh, so I have gone to quite a few. I enjoyed it. I expected Kevin to talk more, but I also understand why he did it the way he did. Because Kevin mm. absolutely would stand in front and talk the entire time and nobody else would get a word in edgewise. <laughs> and he has the the wherewithal to know that and put others before himself. So, I mean, yes. bad props to him for that, but I, I really enjoyed the Q and a, all the behind the scenes stuff, Jay mm -hmm. with the, uh, Jay playing the naked video from on the set of clerks <laughs> to, uh, Brian and his go-karts, which that made, that hit my soul. Oh, I that love was that. That made oh, me so here. happy. I, I tried looking for that scene. <laughs> Since we've been home, I'm like, ooh, I need to, and I'll remember it, like, randomly while we're at work, and I'm like, ooh, yeah, no, I need to, like, go look for that, because <laughs> that was just regular Brian. <laughs> yeah, no. I think I caught a glimpse of the, the sunglasses, because he says he wears the sunglasses. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I specifically like watching for, like, little Easter eggs like that in movies, period, though, yep. so, like, that especially, like, hit home for me, and I was like, oh, yes, that's awesome. Nice to get those little tidbits. Uh, Jen was very much forthright in a lot of giving a lot of information. Uh, a lot of times, Kevin always makes her look like the bad guy <laughs> at certain times with the, the way she talks about his career and everything. But she was very giving this weekend and loving the situation and loving the fans, which I really embraced and I love for the fact. And I said to her, I said, are you having a great time? She goes, I'm loving this. And I was really shocked at that because of everything I've heard before. And just like you guys stated before uh, about Kevin, he will definitely, if you give him two questions, he'll be there for three or four hours. <laughs> Absolutely. He's, uh, <laughs> if you listen to the mo most recent things on the fan club, the Wake and Bakes, I, apparently he's in trouble because Jen missed half of Sunday's event because Kevin apparently hotboxed the car and uh, she got <laughs> sick. <laughs> and missed <laughs> half of the event so uh he said the next time they do plus one he's probably in trouble so probably as if probably. i don't spend already a full-time job's worth of time listening to him and on his different various podcasts already i i can't wait to start listening to that as well uh that's gonna be that's gonna be a nice morning podcast for daniel and i to get the day started for sure awesome so did you guys venture out i i know you did and we're gonna put this in the spotlight right now you guys were there on sunday morning with ming and that's how i was able to interact with you guys and i said hey i would love to have you guys on just to talk about our weekend meeting at the 25th anniversary of jay and silent bob secret stash bash you guys got to be on live with ming that morning and i saw it on youtube and i started interacting and i didn't see that many people there 
And I think Ming appreciated it because he messaged me later on saying, hey, dude, that was great. Thanks. Yeah, no, Ming is, uh, like I said, we met at a convention. Uh, Brian had run off the table boy and Ming threw up on Twitter. Hey, you know, we don't have any help this weekend. Can somebody come take pictures and take money and stuff? And I was like, <laughs> I am off and I have nothing to do. He was like, cool. Here's my cell phone number. I'll see you at whatever. So true to form, I I've known Ming ever since then. We've been, I would say, friends. If I message Ming or text Ming, I always immediately get a reply as soon as he's able to. He's extraordinarily busy. Oh, yeah. We have 11 he made episodes. time to meet us at the brewery and have drinks yeah. with us. We had drinks the night before, too. I saw that. That that looked great. Yeah. Because, oh, you tasted the, what? The Fruity Pebbles beer? Yeah, it was a oh, it was a blueberry, blueberry. milkshake. Blueberry milkshake. Yeah. And oh, okay. we had a mango <laughs> sticky rice, and we did a cinnamon roll. Uh, the Source Brewery up in Colts Neck. Um, it was yep. it was great. Yeah, and they so, were actually there at the stash too, and uh, they were promoting it. Yeah, um, we uh, so we met up with Ming on Saturday before the Q and A, hung out for a little while, and then uh, you know he wanted to hang out Friday, but we're all old and can't hang like he can he's uh, he's <laughs> an incredible I'm the youngest of the bunch, but the oldest at heart he's all an right. incredible the human being but i can't keep up with him i just can't most times he's got a lot of energy what do you expect yeah so <laughs> we uh we had booked the podcast like i said our show only has 11 episodes and i think ming's been on four of them and mike's been on at least two but it's awesome. uh just through that friendship, he's got his studio there. We wanted to record at his studio, be able to support his business a little bit. So mm -hmm. uh, it was awesome. He got up after being out until three o'clock in the morning, met us at Jeez. 1030. Uh, we went right live. And, bushy -tailed. Yeah, we had a, a great time. Then we had a nice lunch and uh, we caught our car and went on to actually we went to oh, yesterday. Yeah. After that for an hour and then we caught a car to the airport. But it was great. It was awesome to record with him in person instead of just on StreamYard or over the internet, which we did quite a bit during the pandemic. But uh, it was mm -hmm. great. He's uh, awesome people. Probably the most accessible, quote unquote, famous person that there is. Anybody in the world that will hang out with me, he's down. He loves uh, all his fans and uh, everybody is a friend to him. So he's great people. Awesome. Cool. Well, uh, I think that kind of wraps up our coverage of uh, our lovely adventure, <laughs> the 25th anniversary bash at the Secret Stash, at Jay and Silent Bob Secret Stash. So, uh, where else can our listeners hear you? I want you guys to plug away at whatever you are you got going on. Uh, if you have a podcast, business that you want to plug, just let me know, and I will definitely put them in podcast notes but this is your time to shine awesome our podcast is the two key geeks podcast the number two key geeks uh that is on all the places you find your podcasts uh amazon apple google spotify audible anywhere you get podcasts at we're on there we have a facebook page carrie just got us instagram set up so you can find us on instagram facebook I don't know the specific tags, but Carrie does. And then uh, they have a business as well that I'll let her talk about also. <laughs> um, so I, the Instagram for the two key geeks is just like Ben said, it's also just the number two K E Y G E E K S. I, I would also, I would real quick, just like to shout out to Ben and Daniel. Um, I am not one of the two key geeks. I'm like the plus one somehow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> two plus one, you know. Um, so, but that is that is totally their 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 baby. Um, I just help out with the Instagram for Daniel. Uh, but we have we ship all over the country. We have our sign shop. People love if you follow there. We have some some nerdy things. Uh, we recently just posted some standees, some cutouts that we made of uh, some three feet tall critters. I have a I collect Care Bears, uh, so we have a couple of Care Bears that Daniel did for me. I have I also collect uh, anything Grogu, any and I have <laughs> even as much as to have I have like a whole almost quarter sleeve of just a Grogu on my arm. But he, awesome. we have some cutouts of him. So I, I try to showcase our nerdy side. We have a huge He-Man photo op outside as window perf. Uh, so that's fun. So I try to post some fun stuff there. Um, but we drop ship all over the country. Anything from banners to hard substrate signs. That's what takes up all of mine and Daniel's entire existence. <laughs> also stickers. If anybody needs stickers awesome. for their yeah, show or for anything. 
What's your socials for that? Oh, um, that would be helpful. It is at uh, signs, S-I-G-N-S underscore vital, V-I-T-A-L. Um, and our Facebook is just uh, facebook.com slash vital signs. And then we have the vital signs, key Largo dot net. Instagram is the best place to find me. Um, if you're going to reach out via social media though, and that is at signs underscore vital. Yeah. Th- this whole thing, we really mark, we appreciate you having this. This has been a testament to this fandom that I, we oh go gosh, to the yes. same, we go to the same event. We've never met before in our lives. We've never listened to each other's shows. And here we are three days later recording an episode together. So, I mean, that's, that's a testament to the people that are a part of this whole thing. And that, I think that's really what makes the whole thing go. And what I've listened to, so what we've listened to so far, like we love. And so like, it's just such a great opportunity, you know, to, to find awesome other. I offer everybody an opportunity to be on this podcast just to have fun. And actually, you know, I love when people have something to offer, like you're talking about your businesses. That is something that other people could key in and provide you with. You could build a clientele. So I'm hoping that could help you guys out. You know, it's national. <laughs> awesome. Thank, you, this point. Thank yeah. you again for having us. And I feel like this has put a fire under all of us to be more consistent. Uh, I've been trying to post to all of our social medias more. Uh, I, I laughed and told somebody the other day, Daniel and I literally yeah. live project to project. And then somebody wants to see something. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't take a single picture. I moved on to my next chaos. <laughs> so that happens, but sparking that creativity, I guess, is my way. Thank you, saying thank you. It, well, it's great to be creative, and that's the whole thing. And you're you're giving people your creativity as well, and giving the option of them to be exposed with your creativity because you know you can provide them with stickers, t-shirts, signage, anything, and. You know, you're, you're getting yourself out there, and that's what I, I love, and uh, that's why I like having people like you on. So uh, I just want to thank all you guys for being on and, you know, sharing your experiences like I had for the weekend and, you know, just us embracing Absolutely. our fandom. That is Kevin Smith and Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash for the 25th anniversary bash. So with that, I am Mark. Ben Elmore. Daniel Elmore and Carrie Sanders and this was Panels to Pixels and we'll see you on the next panel good night everybody